Hello and welcome to Buildings of Tomorrow. My name is John Lester and in today's episode we'll be talking about how do we design and deliver healthy and productive rooms. I'm joined today by Jonathan Copley, a marketing manager for room automation at Siemens Smart Infrastructure. Jonathan, thank you for joining us. Oh, it's great to be here, John. We've talked a lot about room automation. We've talked about healthy and productive rooms and how the, the control of some aspects and, and variables within these rooms can deliver healthy and productive places for our users. How do we plan this? How do we deliver this to the industry? The planners out there and the consultants, they've been aware for a long time of the value of a green building. There's been research that's shown that the rental value of a green building is, is between 5 and 15% higher than uh, an ordinary building. And what we're now seeing is there's a new trend, not only green buildings, but as you mentioned, healthy and productive buildings. Now, when you say green building, you're talking about a sustainable or an energy efficient building. That's correct. And there's a big trend in the market. You might call it the, the wellness trend. There are a number of institutes bringing up, wellness institutes, well buildings, uh, institutes and so on, that are looking at how to increase the health of productivity of people in buildings. And they began looking at things like uh, putting in more plants, spaces to uh, views to green outside the building, yoga at lunchtime, all sorts of great stuff like Perfect. this. But now also they're looking at the air quality because that has an even bigger impact on the productivity of people. Okay. So, so we mentioned green buildings and there are these institutes that have been around for quite a while now that talk about green star ratings and neighbors ratings and these kinds of things. So this is bringing uh, a, a structure and a rating to the wellness and the well-being factor for the building as well. Yeah, and as, the, as time goes on, we're going to see more and more uh, standardization and regulation also for creating healthy and productive indoor spaces. If this means yoga at lunchtime, I'm, I'm down. You're still, on for it. Okay, that sounds perfect. good. So, so having these, this structure, having this understanding, or at least a way to indicate that how the building is delivering a, a space that's good for the well-being of the user is great. What do we have to do differently to actually make this happen? Well, let's begin by thinking about the parameters that you need to control to create a healthy and productive uh, indoor space in a building. Now we talk about CO2, carbon dioxide, VOCs, v uh, volatile organic compounds, humidity and fine dust, air pollution. And when you're planning a building, let's, let's imagine the build phase. Of course, you need to make sure that you have the right mechanical equipment installed in the building that will enable you to control these parameters. And generally speaking, we're talking about ventilation, John, mm -hmm. ventilation systems. Right. So like, all of these, these parameters, we're talking mm -hmm. about the air. Uh, so there has to be ways for us to control the humidity, to control the fine dust within the space, to control the VOCs, uh, and to control uh, the other parts, the CO2. So how do we go about this? What mechanical equipment is required? Okay, well, most modern buildings have some sort of ventilation system. They Let's have an, so, yeah. an air handling unit yeah. that uh, uh, brings in fresh air and forces it around the building. Mm -hmm. But many of them do not have the humidification and dehumidification functionality that's needed to create a comfortable space, but also a healthy space. We know that very dry air causes increased virus transmissions, for example, more colds and flu among your workforce and more absenteeism. So what about installing a humidifier, dehumidifier in the air handling unit? This is something you really need to think about. And depending <clears throat> on where we are located geographically, you need one, the other, or perhaps both, depending on how the, the, uh, the climate is where you are. Indeed, that's exactly right, John. And um, as you were talking about earlier, that we have this fine dust air pollution that can be really bad in uh, certain parts of Asia. It's also well above the recommended health guidelines in most European cities. And there, as a first step, you want to monitor the levels in the buildings, which means having sensors for uh, fine dust, maybe humidity and other parameters, and then considering uh, what you could do about it. So an active <laughs> approach to if you do have to look beyond the outside, because we talked mm -hmm. about how the fine dust 
often in, is within the surrounding air, the, the the space within these major cities. So if inside you become, you know, you find yourself in a situation with too much fine dust, perhaps pumping air from outside doesn't help the situation. It may even make it worse. So we have to have something we can do to change that situation. Yeah, it's a normal first step. If you if you measure uh, the level of p air pollution or air quality in your uh, internal space and you find it's bad, a first step could be to improve the filtration in the uh, handling unit, put mm -hmm. in better filters. Sometimes even that's not enough and in that case you need to have an air purification system room by room, an air purifier. It's often above the suspended ceiling and uh, this unit it sucks bad air um, out and filters it in a very special way and pumps okay. it back into the room. So there's lots of different things through that design process that we can take into consideration to ensure that we have the right mechanical pieces to, to fill the plant and be able to fulfill these requirements. Yes, and you need to think beyond just the initial installation and build okay. because there are other long-term service issues like when do you need to change these filters? Over time, they become blocked, they become dirty, and it's really important that you don't just leave them there. Sometimes they get mold inside them, all sorts of problems. You're pumping all of this bad stuff into the, uh, the office and you really need to change your filters. How do you know that you need to change them? Of course, you could have some regular uh, rotor for changing. Much better though would be to have an alarm that tells you when these filters need changing. And that can be thought about also during the planning and construction phase of the building, making sure that these things are done in as an optimal way as possible, in an automated way. Okay, so not just ensuring you have the plan to, to begin with at the planning phase, but also that it's built and constructed in a way that you can continue to maintain because we see this problem becoming not just uh, understood better by us, but also something that may increase as our globe becomes more urbanized and our population grows. Indeed. And there's also this question of, of, of renovation. It's not only yeah, was... a new build, it's existing buildings, maybe buildings that are being renovated. What can you do there? Well, realistically, you can begin by measuring these parameters, mm -hmm. seeing what sort of problem you have or not, and then deciding if there's something you can do about it. Yeah, and that was a, a really good point because my question was <laughs> new buildings, this is great to understand better and to change and improve what we do, but for the thousands, the hundreds of thousands of buildings that exist, there must be things that we can do today, simple things and, and, and more complex things to try and, and deliver this healthy and productive space. Yeah, it might even be as simple as, as showing the occupants of the building, maybe the children in the school classroom, that the air is bad and saying to the teacher, hey, we've got to open the windows and ventilate. Could okay. be something as simple as that. Okay, so we don't have to, mm -hmm. to go every all the way and install new mechanical plant and do everything. We can really start at the basics. Now that we understand better the impacts, start to understand the, the ventilation characteristics and the requirements to try and balance better this energy saving to healthy and productive spaces equation. Yeah, and thinking of all these things from the beginning, of course, has a much greater impact. Of course. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. And thank you all for joining us here on Buildings of Samara. Please like, share or comment on this episode and also ensure to subscribe to us here on this channel. We'll see you again soon.